I would resent myself if my child resents me for not teaching him something like our local dialect. He doesn't know his father's language, Chui, or he doesn't even know mine. And then he travels to Africa and he feels like a fish out of water. That would be devastating for me. Hey fam, you welcome back to my channel. My name is Titi Lola. I live in Toronto, Canada, where I share my experience as a Nigerian living in Canada. So if you'd like to learn more about, you know, the lifestyle of an African or a Nigerian living in Canada, then you are definitely in the right place. Please subscribe to my channel by clicking the subscribe button and also the bell button so that you know whenever I post a brand new video. So we've been in the month of February for a minute now and since February began, it's actually been Black History Month. And I didn't want February to go by without me actually, you know, talking about Black History Month because Black History means something to us here in Canada and if you're new in Canada or you're planning to come to Canada you should actually be aware that there's something called Black History Month and um, you know why Black History Month and the importance of Black History. So as you can tell from the title of this video I'm going to be talking about you know raising children abroad because I find that it's so easy for us to talk about, you know, immigration to the States, immigration to Europe, immigration to Canada. But one thing I feel like we need to talk about more is talking about raising children abroad, especially as a new parent, especially as someone who's planning to come live abroad and actually raise a family. So I'm taking advantage of Black History Month to actually have this conversation so that we can come to a different mindset on how we can actually consciously think about raising our children when we are thinking of moving abroad or if we're new immigrants, you know, living abroad. So before we talk about raising children abroad, I'm just going to quickly give you a definition of Black History Month. To make this very succinct, I'm going to be reading out something just so that I hit the nail in the head and not make this video too long. So I'm reading this from Wikipedia and it says, Black History Month is an annual observance um, originated in the United States. Um, it's also known as African American History Month um yeah it's official time it's february so i'm just going to read something else from history.com that just really highlights the purpose of black history month so it says black history month is an annual celebration of achievements by african americans and a time for recognizing their central role in u.s history also known as african american history month so aside uh, black history month celebrated in the united states um, there's also Canadian black history. So I live in Canada. So I'm just going to use Canada as an example, you know, in my conversation today. Now, I personally believe that our history as people of African descent is something that should be celebrated and recognized every single day. And I am always thinking about our history. Actually, I'm an African uh, a heritage instructor with the Toronto District School Board. So I teach um, elementary school kids between JK to grade eight. So just basically talking about Africans in Africa, Africans in diaspora, how we all connect and you know, the history, you know, that really connects both worlds. So that's basically it. And I think that, you know, talking about these things is very important and it should be day to day. Um, it should not be something that should be recognized or celebrated once in a year one month in a year however if you're just coming into the knowledge of black history and starting every february is where you're at then that's absolutely fine it's really not too late to start learning now why is learning important when you're traveling say for example as an african you're living in africa to come to a place like canada now you have to remember that in africa you're not seen as a black person like there is no there's really nothing that brings that to your consciousness like oh i'm a black person you're in africa everybody's black you know so um but when you come this way um you're seen as a black person as someone from african descent you are now say for example african canadian um you're indian canadian you're uh, Chinese Canadian I don't know but like yeah I'm just trying to let you know that 
people see your race before they actually uh, call you Canadian as opposed to you know you just coming so now the big question is if you're raising children or if you're coming into the country with children how does this affect them how does this affect how you're going to raise them and this is why i'm just really emphasizing on the importance of teaching your children about african history about african culture very early now something i found as someone who was growing up in nigeria is you know the emergence or was the emergence back then of international schools you have american schools british schools and in these schools they learn about american history or or uh british history even first i don't even know if they teach them anything about african history so you find that these children they have american accents or british accents they can't even speak their local dialect but guess what they know everything about foreign history before they know their own history even in our regular schools like the one i attended we had a subject in school called social studies and history was optional now i personally do not think that a subject like history should be optional for secondary school students you should know the history of your country you should know the history of your continent and so when you come here all the things that you left behind is coming back to you it's it's pretty much coming to bite you you know in the ass because now your children are immersing themselves in a different culture they're passing through a community and they're experiencing things that they never ever thought they, that they could experience. Um, and one, one of the mistakes I think we make when we're trying to teach our children about black history is we're always in the mind of, oh, um, we're trying to teach them about slavery and whatnot. First thing you need to know is teach them that um, African history does not begin or end in slavery. Okay? Africans were traveling all over the world free before slavery. Centuries before even colonization and slavery happened, Africa was way ahead in technology before then. You know, medicine, uh, architecture, science, mathematics, we were way ahead. So these are the things that they need to know so that they will not be learning these things and think less of themselves. So. <laughs> you can't pray away you know saying things like oh these black people they have come again they're always talking white or black that's not the conversation here and the truth is if you don't teach them these things early the society will make them realize that this is something that you should have known and the consequence of that is that when they have negative experiences that has to do with say segregation and and discrimination racial discrimination or you did they experience racism in some type of way depending on that situation it could affect them for the rest of their lives teach your children their culture um teach them the language your local dialect there's this thing about um you know language in africa it's like your child must know the father's language first before they know the mother's language. Listen, it shouldn't even matter. If mom spends more time with children, like in my case, mom should speak her language to the children. It should not be a case of why are you speaking your language when they should be learning my language? Well, teach them when you have the time, husband or partner. So, you know language is very important you will hardly find a child who is very conscious or very much rooted in their culture um stray away from that it's it's not just learning the language the food or dressing up in the culture there is an essence there's a sense of belonging that it gives them and I want you to be mindful of that when your children come to Canada. When they go into the school system, they will even have black children like them bully them. That's not something that you know you think will not happen. Black kids who were born and raised in Canada behave completely different than black kids who were born and raised in Africa. So there's a cultural difference there. And if you do not bring that consciousness to their understanding, 
they would always be shocked like why is this thing happening to me why don't people like me why do people laugh at me when i say my name because my name is maybe chiamaka and they're like oh chiamaka what's that you know for example so why do people laugh at me for the way i speak why do people laugh at me because i'm so dark so these are things that you need to start talking to them about and how how do you start talking to them about it if you yourself as a parent you don't even know i'm working with kids between the age of 4 and 13 and i tell you <laughs> listen the the ages where you need to do the work is between say zero to four years old lay that foundation right and then they get into you know the school system at four years old you know jk and you know and like that now how you know if you're doing a good job is how your child is turning out between 7 and 13 and i have to tell you if you lose your child between 7 and 13 then you have to just rely on prayer alone because in canada these children start making some choices with or without you from those ages because they have friends they're associating themselves and they're getting adventurous and doing stuff and if you do not create a safe environment for them to be able to communicate with you and have that relationship with you where they can you know have same conversations then you've lost them i'm sorry to tell you you're going to lose them by the time they are 13 between 13 and 16 is only three years before they get out of your your space what are you going to do in those times, in those years? Do not lose your child because you want your child to have a British accent, because you want your child to sound American, because you want your child to be liberal. Do not lose your child. I'm just basically trying to tell you that when you come abroad, do not forget yourself. Do not forget your culture. Do not contribute to a cultural suicide. You know, I, I do some things and I remember even a few days ago, my friend told me, uh, oh, actually yesterday, my friend, she laughed about it. It was funny, but it, it, I know she's going to watch this video, but girl, it's stupid when you say something like you are too African, you guys are too African. I think it's stupid when people say that, but we're all learning. So I know that you're not going to take it to heart, but <laughs> I, I said something and she was like, oh, you guys are too African. You don't tell a Chinese person that they are too Chinese. You don't tell an Indian person that they are too Indian. Like, I'm too African. Like, hello, I'm African, you know? So, um, the world is waking up to a consciousness. And with the way things are going, our children are going to grow up and want to learn about their roots and want to visit, you know, Africa and travel the world. I would resent myself if my child resents me for not teaching him something like our local dialect he doesn't know his father's language chui or he doesn't even know mine and then he travels to africa and he feels like a fish out of water that would be devastating for me and you know what if me teaching my child pidgin english or Itako, my local language, or Chui, or him learning some African language he wants to learn, makes him local. Please, I want a local child. Can you give me a local child? <laughs> so now, you might be like, oh, what does she know? She's young, she's a new parent. But you know what? I have seen things here as a teacher that I know that some parents are not thinking about. So yes, when you're moving abroad, you will have to do differently. We will have to raise our children differently. We will have to raise our boys differently. We have to do better with raising our boys. We have to teach our boys that, you know, the kitchen is not for the women. We have to teach them that cooking and cleaning is not for girls. If you can eat, then you must learn how to cook. You must learn how to take care of yourself. Even if it's to climb a chair in the kitchen to help mom prepare something, touch tomatoes, touch stuff. You will have to get them comfortable with the idea of taking care of themselves. If you must leave, you must know how to clean up yourself, groom yourself properly and clean up after yourself. Boy, girl, 
as you as a human being like that's 101 you have to we sing a song for my two-year-old clean up clean up clean up time clean up clean up clean up clean up time and he's packing stuff and putting them away these are the little things that you can do to consciously teach your children how to look after themselves these things are all part of the culture as african people we have a culture to respect one another to be clean to you know look after our home our spaces you know we also have a responsibility as children to honor our parents but if you don't teach them to honor you don't expect it and teaching them to honor you is not by demanding it it's by showing it that you deserve to be honored and how do you show that you deserve to be honored teach them the culture all of this for the culture <laughs> well happy black history month guys i hope this video brings you to a new consciousness about raising your children there are things that we cannot pray away there are conversations that we must have there's a time to be your child's friend and there's a time to be your child's parent it's nice for you to create a safe space where they can come to you without judgment but it's also nice for you to create a space where they can respect you and listen to you when you speak to them as a parent so i'm growing i'm learning and I'm hoping that I do a good job. I'm praying every day for God to give me the grace and to guide me on how to be a good parent and to also guide my husband. I'm very grateful for the opportunity to be a parent for sure. And I hope that I represent for the culture. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it's not too long, but yeah. I enjoy talking about this subject because it's been on my mind for a while now. Oh well, I'll be seeing you in my next video where we'll be talking about something else. Hopefully more interesting than this. <laughs> this was too serious for you. I'll see you in my next video. Until then, bye bye.